Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up to the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. so loud I can hear you clean out in the kitchen. If you think it's loud in the kitchen, you ought to be under here. <laughs> Get through. Hey, boy. Yeah, Uncle Jeff, what? Why don't you do your pounding with a tub up? That way you could see what you're doing and it wouldn't be so hard on your ear. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Jeff, you know something? You're smart enough to be a double knot spy yourself. Do you want to come with me to the West Indies and join up? West Indy? Yeah, that's where Double Knot 7 is right now. Uh, I think I'll pass it. It's a lot of fun. Pretty girls, danger, excitement. I thought you had give up your Double Knot span. I can't, Uncle Jet. It's in my blood. I'm cut out for all that fighting and loving. Well, there you was right keen on being a brain surgeon. Why, them rascals don't even lay in the same kraut barrel with the double knots. Why, a brain surgeon might go for days without doing no worthwhile fighting or loving. <laughs> That's my ejector seat. Yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, you bound and determined, huh, boy? Yes, sir, Uncle Jet. The minute I read old Double Knot 7 was over there in the West Indies, I said, Jethro, pack up and get going. What's all that stuff? Oh, this here's my iron hat. <laughs> This here's my double knot spy coat. <laughs> Got all the tools of the trade in here. Weapons, disguises, telegraph set. Yeah, I know about your spy coat. You don't know I got it armor plated. <laughs> I'm a walking tank with this on. Fine, boy. Uh, what's all this other stuff? <laughs> this here's Biddles for my trip. <laughs> Looks like you cleaned out Granny's root cellar. Pert near did. <laughs> How far is it to this here uh, West Indies? Oh, it's way over yonder. Clean the other side of Kansas City. <laughs> yeah, I hate to think of you taking work that far from home. Couldn't you do your double note spying around here? Uh, we got plenty of room. Wouldn't work, Uncle Jet. Why not? Well, let, let's say I had a case. Like uh, saving Europe or New York or something. Well, right in the middle of it, Granny'd yell, Hey, Jethro, pluck me a chicken. Well, a fella just can't leave off saving Europe to go chicken plucking. I see what you mean. Well, uh, couldn't you live here at home and do your work in town? No, sir. Double Knot Spies ain't got no Beverly Hills office. Couldn't you open one? Just between you and me, I ain't a real for sure official Double Knot Spy yet. How come? Just can't find out where to go to join up. I see. That's why I got to drive to the West Indies. Well, uh, maybe if you opened up an office here and uh, done a real good job, they'd hear about it and come to you. You reckon so? Well, it's worth a try, and it sure beats driving clean the other side of Kansas City. <laughs> and I'll stake you to the rent. I'll pay you back quick as I save my first country. Oh, don't worry about that. I'll call Mr. Drysdale and see has he got an empty office in his bank building. Bye, Uncle Jed. Hey, tell Mr. Drysdale I'm on my way. Come back, Jethro. There you are, Jethro. Just the office you've been looking for. Jethro? Come on, Mr. 
Drysdale. Man, this year flattens out a fellow's arches. Why are you wearing this heavy coat on such a warm day? Oh, I can't tell you just yet. It's top secret. Oh. Well, go on and take a look around. Go ahead. Mr. Drysdale, could you give me a little shove to get me started? <laughs> <laughs> I just heard what you're doing. You can't rent this office. Who says I can? Well, it's the only vacancy in the building, and the Baker and Associates have been waiting six months for it. They're moving in this afternoon. How much money have they got in my bank? Well, none. Mm -hmm. Well, Jed Clampett has a bundle, and he wants his office for Jethro. Now, who do you think is going to get it? <laughs> well, Jethro, how do you like it? <laughs> Who's Jethro? <laughs> Didn't know it was me, did you? <laughs> <laughs> this is just one of my disguises. I got a whole slew of them. Well, why do you need disguises? Miss Jane, when a fellow lives close to danger, he's got to be ready for anything. <laughs> Help me up, would you? Oh. <laughs> Jethro, are you double not spying again? Shh. Oh, I reckon the place ain't been bugged yet. <laughs> this is gonna be Double Knot Spy Headquarters for Beverly Hills. Chief, did you hear that? Yes, isn't it marvelous? Welcome, Jethro. It gives me a feeling of great security to have one of you brave chaps so close to my vault. Am I close to your vault? This desk is directly over it. Hot dog! You won't have to worry about it with me sitting here. <laughs> oh, I might have been followed. I'll use an old Double Knot Spy trick and disguise my voice. <laughs> Just a minute, I can't hear you. What'd you say? <laughs> Granny? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. All right, I'll come right now. Leave my spy headquarters open for me, will you? I got to get home and tote Granny's vittles back into the root cellar and pluck a chicken. <laughs> Surely you can't permit that lovable but misguided boy to turn this office into a spy headquarters. As long as he is Jed Clampett's nephew, I don't care if he turned it into a noodle factory. <laughs> well, Granny, I reckon the boy's got all your stuff moving back into your root cellar. That's good. And when he's done with that, I want him to weed my tater patch. Well, I'll do that for you, Granny. Jethro is right anxious to get back to his spy office. Spy office? Shame on you for going along with that nonsense. Well, it beats letting him drive halfway across the country with a tub over his head. <laughs> halfway across the country? To where? Some place called uh, West Indies. <laughs> you know something, Uncle Jed? It's a long ways from the front of this house to the root cellar when you're toting two, three hundred pounds every trip. Well, Jethro? Yes, sir? Why didn't you drive the truck around back to the root cellar? <laughs> You're awful smart, Uncle Jed. <laughs> it sure use a fellow like you down at spy headquarters. Get them turnips into the cellar. Oh, please don't do that, Granny. It don't look fitting for a double knot spy to get hand paddled. <laughs> I'd appreciate it if the next time you get mad at me, you gun me down or use a flamethrower on me. Something with a little class. <laughs> Jed, you just can't turn him loose in downtown Beverly Hills. Now, Granny, let him get this spy stuff out of his system. Couple of days, he'll be wanting to be a streetcar conductor again. Shoot nickels and dimes out of one of them money squirters. All ready, Pa. Bye, Granny. Where are you going? Well, down to Jethro's spy office. Pa says I can be his secretary. Jed Clampett. Ellie can keep her eye on a boy. Keep him out of mischief. And she might just meet a fella or two. Well, all right. If you find one you like, fetch him home for vittles. Yes, am Granny. Well. I'm all done. See you later. Wait for your secretary. My what? <laughs> I told Ellie she could work for you down to the spy office. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now, Granny, he'll be all right. It ain't him. <laughs>
Mr. Chief, I have not been able to reach Mr. Baker. He's going to show up any minute expecting to move into 205. You leave Baker to me. Just see that Jethro's happy. Speaking of Jethro, the building custodian says he's installing all kinds of crazy things up in that office. Good. He's happy. And so am I. His uncle's paying for it. <laughs> You're the boss. Remember that. <laughs> 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 Didn't know it was me, did you? <laughs> Jethro. Very clever, Jethro. You're a born spy. <laughs> what have you got? That thing. Armor plate. Now, this coat will turn a raffle bullet. Well, what's this, Jethro? Don't yank that. Why not? Do you blow up? <laughs> well, ma'am, this here's a secret weapon. Now, watch my shoe when I yank this. Well, it ain't working right now. But when it does, a pointy blade pops out of the toe of my shoe. What for? Well, old Smirsh has got him. And if they go to kicking to me, I'm gonna kick right back. Fine work, Jethro. You're a credit to your profession. Now, get up to your spy headquarters and make us proud of you. Huh? Yes, sir. I'll do my best. Oh, hey, has anybody been asking for me? Only the custodian. No, no, I mean anyone from uh, International Not Not Headquarters. I don't think so. Well, they don't use names. Uh, just uh, letters like M or Q. That's the way I'll be on the lookout for them. Gee, you shouldn't encourage him to play spy. He's taking it seriously. Well, so am I. If it'll help keep the Clampett account, he can call me Milburn Goldfinger. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be scared. It's me in disguise. Oh, remarkable. But thank you. Now, if Emma Q or anybody with knots in their names comes looking for me, be sure to send them to my office. I'll do that. Doggone, I sure wish I could get that blade to pop out of my shoe before they come. Oh! Oh! What's the matter? I must have put it in backwards. <laughs> oh, that smart. Oh, are you all right? Sure, I'm a double knot. But I'm going to put this back on just in case I go to crying. <laughs> Forgive my curiosity, but what was that? Oh, well, he's just a, uh, um, a temporary tenant. Not on my floor, I hope. Well, I'm Vincent Baker of Baker & Associates. Oh, dear. You seem distressed to see me. Well, I am, yes. After him? <laughs> well... M Mr. Drysdale will explain everything to you, Mr. Baker. What is there to explain? I've been waiting for 205 for six months. You said it would be ready today. Here I am. Yes. Well... Yes? The, the Chief, this is Mr. Baker. He'd like an explanation about 205. Well, he's entitled to one. See as he gets it. <laughs> <laughs> well, looks as though it's up to me, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> Tell me, um, have you ever seen a uh, James Bond movie? As a matter of fact, I've seen them all. Oh, good. That, that, that will make it easier. You see, Mr. Baker, the nephew of our largest depositor fancies himself another 007. <laughs> You can't fire me. Paul Hardman, he ain't fired me, so there. Ellen May, why don't you try to act like a sophisticated, mysterious spy secretary? If I'm ever gonna... Hey, that's probably him calling from London or someplace. <laughs> well, answer it! Double Nut Headquarters? Not Nut Nut! It's Bob Bodine speaking. This you, Em? Oh, this is your Uncle Jed. How's everything going down there? Just awful, Uncle Jed. Ellen May won't do nothing I tell her to. She just keeps shooting paper wads and messing around. Let me talk to her, boy. Yes, sir. Yeah, Paul? Now, Ellie May, I got you there for a reason. You behave yourself and do what Jethro tells you, hear? All right, Paul. Yes, sir. Bye. All right. What you want me to do, nut nut? Nut nut! <laughs> Maybe you want to call off this bank job. 
Honey, there's a quarter of a million sitting in that vault under 205. I've been waiting six months to get at it. But the plan isn't working out. That Jethro kid's got the office. I'll take care of the kid. Besides, it's got to be tonight. The plane's all set. Marty's waiting in Mexico. It'll work out. Vince, it's too dangerous. This kid may not be as dumb as you heard. Take a look at his door. <laughs> There's my first contact, Ellie. Now, you know what to do. Come in. <laughs> How do you do? Hi. We'd like to see Spy Bodine, please. We're from London headquarters. You are? I don't know! Don't Ellie May, you dumb old girl. I told you to be sophisticated and mysterious. A face from London headquarters. I'll fetch him in, huh? No. A stubble knots can't let folks walk in on their own say-so. I gotta check them out through the secret two-way mirror first. Now, you get back out there and sneak that picture off the wall. Would y'all step over here in front of the secret two-way mirror, please? darling? No, I think tonight's the night. your office, Ellie May. This here is top secret stuff. Okay, nut nut. It's not nut. Hold all my calls. I ain't into nobody. <laughs> for opening up a Beverly Hills headquarters without your say-so. It is slightly irregular. Uh, quite. It's the only way I'd get you to notice me. As a matter of fact, we've had our eye on you for some time. Right, Kay? Right. K? J? K? L? Gee whiz, you're higher than them. Yes? What's your initial? Oh, oh, I'm, I'm Jay. <laughs> H thought the Beverly Hills office should have top priority. It's a dandy. Well, right now, there's a secret movie camera taking pictures of us. Really? Yes, ma'am. I got it hidden in the wall. Where? Oh, right over here. Let's see, where'd I hide that rascal? Uh-oh. I must have plastered over the lens. <laughs> well, these things happen. Right, Kay? Uh, right, Jay. Well, I got the office bugged. You have? Yes, sir. See them pencils over there? Yes. Well, one of them is a little wireless microphone and sending set. I think this is it. Oh, by golly, I believe this is just a regular pencil. <laughs> I guess it was right the first time. <laughs> well, anyhow, everything we've set up to now has been recorded on tape. We'd like to hear it. Yes, sir. I got a tape recorder hid right here in this drawer. <laughs> Must have got something in backwards. Maybe I can remember everything we said. Uh, let's see, when you first walked in, you said that Never you... mind. <laughs> How am I doing so far? So far? Uh, you mean there's more to show us? Well, yes, ma'am. I got something in this closet. Q section ain't even got. Wait till you see it. Right under that desk, sweetheart. 250,000. But how do we get rid of the goof? We don't. We let him dig through the concrete. What? They'll think he's just putting in another spy gadget. <laughs> and when he's through with the noisy work, tonight I'll come in with the cutting torch and... This here's my armor-plated spy coat. I got a rig with a tear gas squirter. Now step back and watch this. <laughs> Looks like 
I got that in backwards, too. <coughs> but I got something else to show you. Quick as I get this off. Now, watch my shoe. There, I got the bugs out of that. Now, if old Schmurks goes to kicking at me, they'll get it right back. <laughs> well, anyway, that's how it works. Well, that's all I got ready to show you right now. Do I get sworn in? If your escape hatch passes inspection, you're all set. Hot dog! My what? The escape hatch under your desk. I ain't got no escape hatch under my desk. Did you hear that, Kay? I can't believe it, Jay. H must never know. You mean I'm supposed to have a hole in the floor to get through? That's the first thing you should have prepared. But I can't make one there. Did I hear a potential double O spy say he couldn't build an escape hatch? Well, not under that desk, you see. Let's go. Too bad. He was doing so well. Had a perfect score up the lair. <laughs> Give me another chance, please. Wait a minute, listen. Sorry, we're leaving town tonight. I'll have one by then. Is that a promise? Cross my heart and hope to gas myself. <laughs> what do you think, Kay? Uh, we'll never find another brain like his. <laughs> He's a double zero if I've ever seen one. <laughs> Very well. But keep it top secret. Gee, thanks, Jay. You too, Kay. I'll have it ready when you get back. <laughs> Hot dog! L.M.A., you and me's trading offices. Well, how come? I gotta cut a hole in the floor, and there's a steel vault under mine. Oh. I'm sure Mr. Drysdale will want to show you Jethro's office personally. Who's there? That you, Baker? <laughs> no, no, Chief. It's the Clampets. Oh. Come in, come in. <laughs> Awful nice of you have Miss Jane fetch us down. Oh, not at all. I... I thought you'd like to see what nice accommodations we've given Jethro. Hope he ain't being a double knot nuisance to you, Mr. Drysdale. <laughs> On the contrary. Yes, the chief was just saying, having Jethro here makes the whole building more secure. <laughs> Where are you going, Jethro? I'm gonna climb up on your desk and jump through that hole I chiseled in the floor. Well, well I know how there yet. There will be. Help me up. <laughs> Stand aside. One, two. Well, let's go up and look at spy headquarters, shall we? General! What the blue blazes is going on? That's my double knot escape hatch. Howdy, pal. Howdy, Granny. Kelly Bay, get down here and cover up that hole before somebody gets hurt. Yes, I'm Granny. Sure hope I don't have to escape too often. It's a pretty fair drop. You mean you busted that hole in the ceiling of purpose? I had to. Otherwise, Jay wouldn't swear me in. Who's Jay? Well, he's the head spy from London. If I'd have put the hole where he wanted me to, I'd have had to bust into your vault. My vault? Yes, sir. Oh, step into my office. I want to hear more. See him on that page? No, sir. How about this page? There he is. That's old Jay. It's Tony the Torch Montanero. <laughs> alias Vincent Baker. Alias Vince Vecchio. Alias Gene Booth. Alias Bob Graham. Boy, has he got disguises, huh? <laughs> Ellie, you covered the hole, didn't you? Yes, ma'am, Granny. I sewed the carpet back over it. <laughs> All right, Tommy, on your feet. That's good. How soon will he be back? In about 10 years. 10 years? I can't wait that long to get swore in. <laughs> hey, wait for me. <laughs> Someday, I gotta have a long talk with that boy. <laughs>
time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation. Thank <music> you.